with the move, man. <laughs> Listen, what's pop money game? What's going on, man? It's your boy J Money, man. And it's so f did I start recording? All right, yeah, I did. <laughs> All right, man. Listen, you guys see me yesterday. I wasn't sick. Now I'm sick. It's kind of bullshit how life works. But you got anything <laughs> to say before I got something to say? Um. You're gonna have a dramatic downfall, my friend. No, no, because I, I feel like this downfall definitely happened between like two people, you know what I mean? Because F2 was obviously two people. And I, so it just annoyed the shit out of me, guys, bro. It's like, because I was right. She put a drop ceiling like one time better than me, and now she thinks she's like, she put she, she Because, no, no, no. She, she thought she was like smarter or something. No, shit. I was it's telling weird. him to put it the right way, and he was like, no, it doesn't work. He was like, I would cut something off if you do it right. I got up and I did it right. You're weird, dude. Like, and she, but the thing is, that's fine, right? That's all cool. But then she wouldn't stop talking about it. Because like, we I were love good. When he's it, it went on like for ten minutes, bro, where she just wouldn't stop gloating, bro. Like, good, good job. All, all right, right, so this is gonna be the downfall. That's gonna be the downfall. gonna be the downfall. Jane Soap reacts, man. That so, I'm always right. <laughs> man, see, bro. I'm but honestly, what do you think is the downfall? Let's see that I just said, bro. It has to be the money or people. Okay, let's see. You know what I mean? Or hoes. The F2, aka Jeremy Swaz Lynch and Billy Wingrove, are arguably the techiest football freestylers nah, on the internet. Uh, real quick he before we get into this, man, I ain't gonna lie, I reacted on one time these dudes are freaks, yeah, bro. Crazy. They, they, I don't know. They're, they should have been playing football. Been <laughs> showcasing their talent online and have cemented themselves in the football industry. And over the years, they've built a social media network that has the combined hey, following of an above average size European country. Wow. Their football videos often revolve around working with brands and professional football players. Alongside this, they produce football challenge related content, most of which is aimed at a young audience. So, how did this social media football duo go from everyone's favorite football right, freestylers? They already blaming dude off the bat. I don't, know, I don't know what he I was gonna say social media. Thing. I don't know what he did, but that shit is. I don't know, man. He got to, he had to do some crazy shit because they got this guy's an angel. They got this dude looking like he came from the trenches. Football man. duo go from everyone's favorite football freestylers to football villains. It is impossible to keep track of all the football, but your best chance is here. Thousands and thousands of hours of football, each more climactic than the last. Constant dizzying, 24-hour year long, endless point. football. Every I'm not gonna lie, reacting them before, and I got that shit. Well, Really? <laughs> this is the rise and fall of the F2. It was probably this dude on the, the dude that's evil. <laughs> Before I begin, I should mention that realistically, they haven't fallen in terms Damn. of success. Oh, because both that? Jeremy yeah. and Billy are insanely successful. However, in this video, I want to talk more about their reputation within the YouTube and online community. So who the fuck are these people? Jeremy <laughs> Swaz Lynch has always had a passion for football, and apparently began freestyling in 2000, at age 13 Ooh. after watching a Nike advert that featured Edgar Davis and Danielson. According to Jeremy, at age 15, he played for Arsenal's academy and oh, has publicly shit. stated in an F2 Arsenal. video that Arsenal coaches told him that on the ball he was the best at the whole club, including the first team. However, off the ball he was the worst. <laughs> for me, I'm not a professional because I was at Arsenal. I was on my way to being a professional. Got released because they said on the ball you're the best at the whole club, including the first team. I was only 15 at the time, the best. But they said off the ball you're one of the worst. Which was true, and it was because I was too raw. I didn't have any much coaching when I was uh, growing up, so my movement and my understanding of the game was actually poor. Now, if my D isn't that crazy, you could be so good with the ball, but at the game, you're not. You didn't think that sound like a pile? No, nah, I'm not seeing it. I'm not. I, I'm not gonna start this. Well, no, no, no. I want to hear you. No, nah, it just sounded like I don't know, man. Like like excuses to me. No, 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 no. It's true though. Like. You could be good at movements and skills, but the actual game itself, you suck at it. Yeah, but I'm saying it sounds like excuses. Like, I just feel like, bro, like, you do, you, you, everyone got the, the same thing, man. You can't really just, I don't know, bro. GCSE maths is correct. The time in which Jeremy would have been told he was the best ball player at Arsenal was in the 2003-2004 season. Henry? Now, if you don't know what happened what? in the 2003-2004 no. season, Arsenal won the Premier League and went completely unbeaten for the entire season and arguably had some of the best players of all time, including Thierry Henry, Dennis Bergkamp, and Robert Pires. However, since Jeremy's claim that he's played for Arsenal at 15, ex-professional footballer Fabrice Mwamba, who's the same age as Jeremy, also played for Arsenal's academy at the same time, and appeared on Jack May's Happy Hour podcast, in which he stated that he never recalls Jeremy being part of the squad, Damn. and that he never appeared in any of the team photos. Damn, not even in the team photos, my guy? What are they for? You talking audience? about bringing? You talking about playing in there? You ain't around the yearbook, bro. Part of the squad, and they <laughs> never appeared you, in any of the team photos. Yeah, you know, about me, he went, he went in there. No, no. And I know every single body in that year above me. 
Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm everybody in that year above me. So you're telling me he's played with with, with Cesar Fabregas, yeah? Because Fabregas, he was a year above me. Fabregas? So that's the that's God. What? As a result of this, Jeremy faced Are heavy backlash judging? and memeing across the internet. After getting released from Arsenal's academy, Jeremy went to university, where he'd complete his coaching badges. At the age of 20, during his final year of university, he went on, at the time, one of the most popular talent shows in the world, Britain's Got Talent. <laughs> this is where Jeremy first founded what? the idea Britain's of turning got football talent? freestyling This is where he came from? Jeremy got yeah, let me just say something real quick, bro. If you're that good, man, why you gotta lie about being super... I'm not saying... I don't know if he's lying or not, but I'm just saying... There's no need to lie about be like being better than great. Like we know you're nasty at football, bro. Why you gotta make up some story or something? You know what I mean? Like saying you're better than Henry. Can you rewind? Rewind what? See what? No, no, right here. America's no. got talent. Yeah. In the world, Bruce has got, got talent. talent. This <laughs> is where Jeremy first founded the idea of turning football freestyling into an act. Jeremy got great reactions from the yes, judges, I mean, even though the show is completely scripted. I managed to get all the way to the semi-finals of the show before Pierce getting Morgan? out. Billy Wingrove is the oldest and wisest of the duo, and comes from a passionate football family, with his dad briefly playing for Tottenham's academy, and his cousin being part of the first team squad at Arsenal. However, his cousin never actually played for Arsenal. At age 11, Billy apparently had trials for Tottenham, but was told by his coaches that he was too small and not physically strong enough to make it at the professional level. Oh Despite being told this, Billy pursued a career in football, playing at youth level for Enfield Town and semi-professionally for Ware from 2004 to 2009. During his time playing football, he had performed football freestyling to earn money on the side. Billy first saw the potential to turn football freestyling into a business, noticing a gap in the market for something that That's had like never a, been seen before. I, I'm, I'm, he, football free he sounds like he had a humble upcoming, you know what I mean? Like he played, he, yeah. like that's some like movie, movie shit. Right. He played football to make money on the side, bro. That's some real dude shit. Darling was relatively new. It's Billy like had Conor been doing it for eight years up to this point. And noticed that everyone had already seen freestyling and wondered how he could evolve the art form. Wow, to set himself that? apart from everyone else football freestyling, oh, Billy teamed up with his close friend Jeremy to conceptualize the F2. They realized that they would have more success and be more marketable to brands as a duo rather than trying to pursue careers as professional footballers. The F2 would become the first synchronized football freestyling double act, performing choreograph routines. Like Billy, Jeremy had been freestyling Yo. for a while, working with big brands and legends of the game, and was looking for new ways to evolve his career. So so the partnership made business sense. After a start, like, bro, how does that happen? So, how does that happen? How the hell they get Cristiano Ronaldo? It's, it's because they they became so popular, they became a celebrity just like Cristiano Ronaldo. You know? Yeah. They could easily. I mean, like, it makes sense that they got. Bro, there's big ass people. They got. Like, they made a name like, out of themselves. You to get Cristiano. You know how hard Ronaldo, it is to get his attention. I know, but do you know? To, no, they didn't even get his attention to come do a video with you. Yeah, like, bro, like, honestly, Speed has been, like, Speed is the freaking, like, biggest yeah. person on the internet. He he, he got his different. attention, but he doesn't got it, like, That's you know what I mean? That's different because these two players, F2, is mainly football. Ronaldo is going to see that, and he's going to go on. It's different. He's definitely not going to go on know, Speed. Bro. I'm going to start hitting would Ronaldo. Never happen. I'm going to hit Ronaldo up, bro. If he's doing everybody's channel, bro, I think it's only This is fun. not everybody, though. These are successful-ass people. I'm successful people, bro. Ronaldo, you watching this shit, bro? Come pull up, man. We got a seat for you right here, man. It's so full. Be more than happy to... Watch to uh, react the with you without <laughs> saying. F2 in January 2011, they were invited to perform at the Ballon d'Or Awards in front of the best footballers in the world. They took advantage of this notoriety by conceptualizing the idea for a DVD titled I I Learn How to well Football Freestyle, videos. Volume 1, which was the perfect move for the brand and would establish the early beginnings of what the F2 could wow, be. Wow, so what the hell you people are doing? Mm -hmm. During the promo for the DVD, really? they had a 10-minute featurette documenting their rise, which allowed for fans to get a better understanding of their personalities and motivation behind the F2. That clip came out on the right time on YouTube, wasn't there? There wasn't many crazy. videos. So I know we're, we're competing all the time now with other people putting on the hits, but we want to get in a million, a few million mark, definitely. Yeah, if we get if we get to five million with this, we'll be happy. Billy is one of the most business-minded guys I've ever met. Uh, he's got an eye for a dollar. He's definitely got an eye for a dollar. Despite probably being the most successful football freestyler in the world. Punctual is, is not even the word for it. There's punctual and then there's getting there four hours before the event starts. That's Billy, all right? And I'm the other extreme where I'm more late, so 
we balance each other nicely. Billy is undoubtedly very business savvy and a perfectionist in the truest sense of the word. He stated early on that he found working alone for many years to become more and more like a job. However, forming the F2 revitalized his passion and gave him the direction he needed to execute their game plan. On the 8th of April 2011, the F2 established their YouTube channel, creating skill tutorials and challenges to showcase their ball skills. They had the perfect niche in one of the most popular topics in the world, making it seemingly impossible for it not to explode and build momentum. Throughout the years, they had multiple income streams, working with global brands, selling books, DVDs, began talent agencies and reached an unfathomable wow. amount of people. So how did this one strong friendship break down really? and one of them create a questionable reputation this around the brand? The Wembley account. Cup was a YouTuber footballing event that paired YouTubers oh, with ex-professional legends brand. The Wembley Cup was a YouTuber footballing event He's from, I think he's from Sidemen. I feel like I've seen him before. No. He does a podcast now, no? No, Jen, no. No, I'm being dead ass, bro. No, no, there's a guy from Sidemen that looks no. just like this. Dude. No, no. I don't know if he's from Sidemen, but I've seen him in Sidemen before. He has Yo, a podcast now. Do you now. have your contacts? I in? swear, so. Do you have your contacts? Oh my God, him? you're lucky I don't know his name, yeah. Somebody who knows, like, UK YouTubers, bro. You know exactly who I'm talking about, bro. This dude right here, man. Event. I swear. That paired YouTubers with ex-professional legends to form different teams. The cup took place consecutively for four years between 2015 and 2018. Both Billy and Jeremy competed on multiple occasions. However, in 2018, the Wembley Cup became clouded in chaos, with the F2 in the epicenter of the beef. But in order to understand why this happened, we need to go back to March 2018. On the 4th of March 2018, F2 collaborated with XO, a YouTuber collective that featured True See? Geordie and Stephen Trice. The video was a standard YouTube football challenge. However, throughout the video, you can notice that Jeremy gets more and more agitated while filming, and the EXO boys are left cringing at the atmosphere. Towards the end of the video, they played a game of Mr. and Mrs., in which it became obvious that the content wasn't going to be in line with the F2's brand, and they looked annoyed. The day before the Wembley Cup, on the 24th of November 2018, Stephen posted a video titled, The F2 Diss Track, that took the piss out of Jeremy's Halloween video, in which he dressed up as the Batman, and had a light-hearted poke at the F2 as they were playing in them in the Wembley Cup the following day. I used to like the F2, but stop saying swear. You're nearly 40. It's the return of the max. Oh, Bro, look it. I'm being dead ass. I feel like this guy does the podcast with him. I'm being dead ass. I, I swear. It's like, a, like that guy. It looks like him. Kind of. The day of the Wembley Cup rolled around and the F2 won the Wembley Cup. However, controversy occurred after the F2's team yeah, lost to EXO in the preliminary rounds, complaining that the referee cheated by blowing his whistle early, although the squabbling would continue after Jeremy found out about Stephen Tri's diss track from the day before. Jeremy Lynch comes over with his little mate and, oh God. and they've got a camera crew with them. So he comes round and he's going, I think my mate's funnier than you. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> in my mind, I think you've won the Wembley Cup. Mm. This is what this is all about. Just celebrate it. He was taking photos in hashtags, like where all their players were, stood in the middle of them taking photos. They're all fucked off with them. Yeah. And he comes up to me because he's, he's just trying to just get all these points off people. Right. I think you beat us in the game. That's what this all is about. This is done. Yeah. You've had the last laugh. But then he comes over to me and he's going, blah, 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 blah. So I just start picking at Jeremy then, going, talk about his Halloween video. Yeah. Me? Because it's so easy to do. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then I start, I think his other mate goes, Oh, you're making the videos with your gay mates. I just go, What? Gay mates? <laughs> why, why are you being homophobic? So he freezes up because he realizes he's made a mistake. Yeah. And then he comes out with a, He's getting a Lamborghini. <laughs> A few weeks after the podcast nice. was released, I mean, on the 1st of September 2020, footage emerged on Twitter of the encounter between Stephen and Jeremy, almost two years after the Wembley Cup first took place. Bro, this guy's kind of weird that yeah, he keeps like, breaking ew. up, like, bro, honestly, like, you... That just, like, cringed me, yeah, like... Yeah, me too, bro, like, there's a real here. life that goes on outside YouTube and Instagram Seven, and shit, You can get 100 likes on your... I can get nah, 100 likes on my tweet right yeah. now, what the All fuck? Alright, you sound weird too, so... No, 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 what I'm saying is, like, he's really, like, downplaying him by getting 100, like, like... Alright, but... It doesn't have to do with social I, I, Who media. gives a shit about getting exactly. one, two, or three that's likes? I'm, I'm just saying that... Bro, I'm, that is not a flex, bro. You your I, likes on your likes on shit is not a flex. I'm no, sorry. hundred percent. And I'm just saying like you got your priorities messed up, B. I think 
Now, the video is unbelievably cringe. Hell but yeah. the video went viral and led to the majority of people coming to the conclusion that Jeremy is an absolute knobhead. On the 4th of September, Stephen released a video to his channel titled My Final Thoughts on the Wembley Cup, in which he stated, When you put yourself online, you've got to have that humility where you get the piss taken out of you. You've got to deal with it better than trying to get your mate to start on someone. This whole thing is so unnecessarily dramatic. It's unbelievable. On the 5th of September, CEO and founder of Hashtag United and the Wembley Cup, Spencer FC posted a podcast to his channel discussing the drama surrounding the 2018 Wembley Cup. In the podcast, Spencer documents that the referee did in fact cheat at the Wembley Cup by blowing his whistle two minutes early during their loss against XO because apparently he didn't like the F2 boys. This was found out due to the referee emailing Spencer two years after the event. Deeper in the podcast, Spencer alludes that things behind the scenes of the F2 are extremely rocky and that Jeremy and Billy aren't on the best of terms and haven't been for a long time. We can't speak for this first hand, but I've heard all kinds of rumours about what's going on behind the scenes for those two. Like, I think they've sold Rascal. I believe they've wrapped up some of their other businesses as well. You know, at one point, the F2 had like four or five, they had an agency. They had the F2 Academy, which is like an education thing. They had Rascal. They had a, a another agency that wasn't Revolution, about footballers, think, yeah. it was about young guys. There's rumours that they've got rid of a lot of those businesses. And some of the reason that is rumoured to be behind that is because they are not on good terms. I don't even know if they're mates. I think that for a number of years, and I've seen this firsthand, them working together has been a, uh, a, a necessary evil, shall we say. I, I don't know if I'd be that surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, that's but that's, I feel like, subsequently that's like this. you gotta expect that though, right? Yeah, I was just gonna say that. You beat me to it. I feel like, especially if it just you, imagine just you and your co-worker for 20 years working to the, and, and like, that's like you and your and brother. You get to the, and there's and like that power, that power type yeah. of thing too, like, oh, who owns more of the channel, shit exactly. like that. like. You know what that I mean? They say, that's why they say like partnership is. Yeah, bad. business and business and yeah. all that. Literally, it's it's like it's a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. It's, it's just a, yeah. very hard to manage, bro. Like you just can't be emotional within it. Yeah. It has to be literally business. I feel like. More and more people but still, that doesn't even work out well. Speak even speak about their experiences. I don't know. Working you gotta be lucky, people. One online commenter stated, "I've always liked Billy. He gets lumped into all of this, but he seems like a decent guy having to work with a walking ego." Today, they still upload to the F2 channel. However, they no longer appear in videos together. Billy runs his family channel and recently managed Sidemen FC in the YouTube All-Star Charity game. Meanwhile, Jeremy has an insanely successful TikTok and YouTube account where he mainly makes shorts aimed towards kids. It seems then that anyone who's They're worked separated. with or fans of the F2 have divided opinions on Jeremy and for the most part feel sorry for Billy for having to sit through Jeremy's self-absorbed narcissism. And if you can tell that I have a biased opinion, it's because I do. Jeremy represents exactly the type of person I don't like in this industry. Influencer lifestyle with a deep lack of self-awareness and an ego the size of my penis. Thank you so much for watching this video and your support recently. It really does mean a lot to me. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at oh, FatMima. Like, <laughs> Where did that like, come from? That like just what you threw see. me off. That shit was mad left field, bro. Unnecessary information, the first of all. all right. First of all, all right, you can't comment on that situation, all right? Two, second of all, unnecessary information. That means the man got a comment. small ego, if you get what I'm saying, because you get my joke. There was something I wanted to say, bro. This man threw me off, man. Damn. He was just coming at who? Who was that? I gotta rewind that, bro. Um. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, I remember. It was actually unrelated. I don't know. I, was, I actually wanted to say, yo, man, rest in peace, take off, bro. That shit is crazy. Oh, yeah. That's some real shit. Um, yeah, Bye. guys. Uh, dramatic downfall. Uh, I'm not surprised, man. That shit happens all the time, I feel like. It's, I mean, but at least, who cares? Like, this man was being biased at whatever. That guy is not good. But at least their own, they're, they're still successful in their own way, you know? Yeah. No matter yeah, what yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm who happy. Cares I'm, who's I'm bad. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm happy that As both of them are doing well. I don't want to see, like, I don't even care if dude got ego or anything like that. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm glad to see him do well. I mean, his whole life Both he worked towards something. I don't care. Exactly. About All it. that dedication. Honestly, he's yeah. talented as hell, bro. He deserves it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But, guys, join the Twitch. We're going to be start. Well, I'm going to start Twitch streaming soon. You know what I'm saying? Get back in my flow with things. <laughs> Damn, we sneeze and burp and everything. But, yo, guys, <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed this video, man. Hit the subscribe button, and you'll get a bonus kiss. You don't want it. And we out, baby. Peace. Peace.